Oh, I've been working to bring the people original horror content for hours. I need to get something to eat. Oh, what are these? Stop right there! Get away from those eggs. No, dude, chill out! It's just my favorite Easter movie. Critters 2. Let's enter the tape tomb. What is up everyone and welcome to another episode of The Tape Tomb, a show where we talk about some of my favorite movies in my ever-growing VHS collection. I'm Larry Downs and this week we high-five zombie Jesus and celebrate Easter with the one and only horror Easter movie that I know, surely setting myself up for failure every year following this one, with Critters 2 from 1988. This is a direct sequel to the original, and for those of you that are unfamiliar with the franchise, in short, Critters was one of the copycat sci-fi horror creature feature series from the 80s that tried to recreate the success of the main monster puppet movie Gremlins from 1984. Critters is about a group of small but vicious alien creatures called Krites, who escape from an alien prison and land on Earth, causing chaos and eating everything and everyone in sight. Think Gremlins, but with a little more camp, blood, and space bounty hunters. But Critters 2 follows up right where the first one left off, where we saw a small batch of little crate eggs in a chicken coop, which makes this a perfect setting for an Easter movie. As most of you know, I'm a huge sucker for holiday-themed horror movies, and this one doesn't disappoint. Not only is it an awesome just holiday-themed horror movie, but it's just a good, fun horror movie in general. It's the perfect kind of flick for those fellow creeps that would rather spend the holiday watching horror, blood, and guts instead of going to church. Sorry, Mom. But let's get to the bare bones of this bad boy. We have Mick Garris in the director's chair, who's brought us tons of TV mini docs about behind the scenes things about our favorite movies and the scary cat movie Sleepwalkers. And on the writer's block to help Mr. Garris, we have David Tuhi, who's been involved in such projects as The Fugitive, G.I. Jane, and the whole Riddick series, which I think is pretty solid. But what's this movie about? Let's dig in and find out. Roll the film. Critters 2 starts off with our ragtag group of bounty hunters from the first movie, Ugg and Lee. Ugg still maintaining the appearance of 80s rocker Johnny Steele, and Lee still undecisive about which form he should take. But now they got plus one with them, as Charlie, the town loser, has become their friend, and now he's a space bounty hunter as well. After being contacted by this clay alien puppet, they're told that they need to go back to Earth to finish their job because it's not done. The Krites are still on the loose. Back on Earth, the Krites are in the form of these little eggs that have been picked up by this guy, who sells them off to this old lady as fancy Easter eggs from Europe. The old lady is oblivious and they decorate these bad boys and lay them out for the kitties to find for the Easter egg hunt. Now, in comes Brad Brown, the kid from the first Critters movie. He's trying to lay low and avoid any connections with him and the Krites. Oh shit, what terrible timing. These eggs are finally hatching and the Krites now find the best victim for this kind of movie. That big old bunny. And as no one saw the Krites do it, and they convinced themselves that it was some sort of a perfectly timed accident, Brad, Leanne, Ugg, Charlie, and Lee, who has now taken on the appearance of a Playboy centerfold, go out on their mission to put a stop to the alien menace, the Krites. No problem, right? We did this before. We know what to expect. Oh, fuh. Hopefully they have more luck than the Easter Bunny in Critters 2, the main course. Critters 2 is one of those rare occurrences being a really solid horror movie sequel, and in some ways, it's almost just as good as the first one. These movies don't take themselves so seriously, which just makes for a lighthearted and fun creature feature movie series that stops being good, unfortunately, after this one. Critters 2 is a massive monster mashup with space shit, holiday wholesomeness, and my second favorite takedown of the Easter Bunny in all of cinema, the first being this one. What? All of these reasons and more make Critters 2 a perfect fit for us here at the Tape Tomb. Here's some facts about Critters 2, the main course. A cardboard cutout of Freddy Krueger appears in the film. Both Critters 2 and A Nightmare on Elm Street are a New Line Cinema property. This film was executive produced by Robert Shea, the co-founder of New Line Cinema. Mike Garris had wanted to get Frank Welker to do the voices of the Krites, but he couldn't afford to get him, so he ended up doing most of the voices himself and hiring a loop group to provide additional vocals for him. This movie is included in film critic Roger Ebert's most hated list. Well, yeah, you're on our most hated list, even if you're dead. Sorry. Thank you all so much for tuning in to another episode of The Tape Tomb. I've been your host, Larry Downs, and if you liked this week's episode, make sure you click that like and subscribe button to inflate my ego and let me know that we're doing a great job, or leave us a comment telling us what movies we should do in future episodes. 
Tune in every other week to our sister series, Airlock Shock, starring Nick Haskin. He's always talking about sci-fi movies, just like we do horror here at the Tape Tomb. Like I said, I've been your host, Larry Down. Stay spooky, my friends, and we will see you in the sequel.